Over the past 17 years, I've had the privilege of meeting very many special children. Their stories have deeply impacted me, and I'm sure they'll impact you too. Bim Bim's an eight-year-old boy who came to the centre uh, to ICC about four years ago. Bim Bim has cerebral palsy, and in therapy terms, we'd say it's a spastic quadriplegia, so it affects all four limbs. Bim Bim is quite intelligent and actually can um, speak some English. He can copy words that you say. He actually can translate for me when I try in my bit of Chinese. Uh, he translates in proper Chinese for the others. He's probably the most physically disabled of the group of six boys that we have here. Three years ago, Daryl and I, when we were coming back to visit, bought in a wheelchair for Bin Bin. So we were able to raise some funds for that. And that gave him a great deal of independence. He is able to push his wheelchair himself. And so it gave him access that he didn't have before because his walking is very, very limited. In December last year, there was two little babies, very tiny newborn babies abandoned into the welfare centre with spina bifida. And they both had open lesions on their back which is a very dangerous condition for a newborn. There was a little boy and a little girl, and so we negotiated with the welfare centre. They, they thought that there was no hope for these children at the time. Unfortunately, and very sadly, the little girl developed an infection, which is the risk that, that these children have, and passed away. But Ming Ming was sent to Shanghai, where he had the lesion on his back closed. He also had a shunt placed in his head, to drain the, the fluid because he has hydrocephalus because of his um, spina bifida. But he's come back and he's really healthy and well. <laughs> We're praying for a family to um, decide to adopt him. As he grows up, he'll need a wheelchair, but he'll be able to have an education. He'll grow up and be a healthy, happy little boy. When the next little baby with spina bifida was abandoned in January this year, um, the welfare centre, instead of waiting for us to advocate, they rang us up and asked us to help Shang Shang, who is sitting here. Uh, we also arranged for him to go to Shanghai and he had his lesion closed. And he's growing up also waiting to be adopted. And he's also seeming to develop the ability to crawl and has yeah, very good chances of being able to walk in the future. So he's also a little success story, a life that was saved. Tong Tong came to us when she was just a few months old and when our project was just a few months old. So um, She's one of our old girls, so she might not look it. <laughs> to me, she's just an image of what we're doing here, what ICC is all about. We value Tong Tong's life. She's a beautiful little girl. She's been with us for five years. Yeah, when she looks at you, you kind of melt. <laughs> if ICC weren't here, Tong Tong's life wouldn't have had the opportunity to impact so many people. The peace and beauty that God breathed into her and made her to exude <laughs> wouldn't be here if ICC didn't have the opportunity to be here giving her life and love and hope and um, care and chocolate milkshake. So young Fuyong has had a cardiac defect and he needed surgery in his first month of life and so we transferred him to Shanghai and arranged for him to have his operation. The larger vessels of his heart were kind of reversed around the wrong way. So now he's been matched to his family and he's got a book of photos here about his mum and dad and his brother and what his house looks like and he seems quite happy to look at them. Hey. This is Yang Tu Yuan. Um, Yuan Yuan was abandoned in the welfare center last winter. Obviously well cared for, coming from a, a loving family, came into the welfare center, a very happy, healthy girl. Beautiful clothes and a beautiful neck, wearing a beautiful necklace from her family. And within a very short period of time, she took a, quite a turn for the worse and um, obviously traumatized from being abandoned. Quite quickly, lost a lot of weight, um, refused to eat, um, wouldn't even finish her bottle, um, wouldn't take any solid food. During that time we were really hoping to get her into ICC but there wasn't any spaces available. Eventually a space opened up for her but by that, by that time she was very malnourished, very weak, um, 
had a severe chest infection as well, so eating was very painful for her. Um, couldn't, didn't have the strength to suck on her bottle. Couldn't even make any noise when she cried. And uh, we had a short-term team here at the time, and they really took a shine to her and were willing to spend all of their time with her. So basically for about a week, she was held uh, pretty much all day, every day and encouraged to try and eat and encouraged to live and encouraged to fight for her life. Um, eventually we had to place a feeding tube in her in order to just get her enough nutrition to be able to rest and to heal from being so ill. And now you can see she's a fat, happy baby. Tuntun came to us after spending a year in the welfare center and when she was there someone on the short-term team was describing her as Jesus because up there where food is scarce she would share her food and she would help feed the babies and she was kind of like a light in the welfare center. When she came over there was a big party because everybody loved Tun Tun because of who she is and her childhood was restored to her and she loves going to class, learning to walk with a walker. And her caregiver just said that she learned how to bathe herself um, recently. We're really privileged to have somebody like Twin Twin in the project, who's so giving and sweet and yeah, and loving. Yeah. Hi, Ty, as we call her. Came into the orphanage in the middle of June 2010. Um, she was, when she was abandoned, she was actually very malnourished and she had a very large tumour on her back that measured about 18 centimetres by 19 centimetres, which is probably the reason that she was abandoned. We took her to the local hospital to try and get a biopsy done and their feeling was there was no point. She was going to die, it was going to be cancer. But after much negotiation, they agreed to do the biopsy and the biopsy results came back to show that she had a vascular tumour. We consulted with doctors overseas and um, they suggested we start a medication. And the local doctor said, there's no point, you're wasting your time, there's no hope for this little girl. But we did as was suggested by the doctors overseas and over the last 12 months we've seen the tumour shrink until it's no longer visible. It can be felt and it's now down to three centimetres and it's just an amazing miracle. As you can see, she's, she's healthy, she's um, attending kindergarten and she's just doing really, really well in life. <laughs>